Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2002 film release, Bubba Hotep, which uh, if you're not familiar with Bubba Hotep, stop this video, go watch it. I do recommend it for people who are into horror. Bubba Hotep, uh, I've owned this on DVD for a decent amount of time. Um, been a fan of this for a while. Rewatching it, it was even better than I remember it being, to be honest, because there's a lot going on in this film. So, uh, with this, there, there are two forces kind of coming together in this movie that I really, really love. Two people in particular who I'll talk about that makes me love the film even more than I otherwise would. So, obviously, Bruce Campbell's in this film. So many people love Bruce Campbell. He's got such a wonderful following. Uh, met him recently. Super nice guy. Uh, I've always loved his work. I think he, he's just a character actor. He's one of those cool character actors who... Yeah, I mean, if you if you like one of his characters, you like all of his characters pretty much. You just like his acting style. He's just got this way about him. He's, he's very, like, confident. He's snarky. Fun times. You can tell he has a good time with his roles. So he's in this, but I also think that Ozzie Davis does an exceptional job in this. Oh, spoilers, by the way. It's going to be a bunch of spoilers in this. So Ozzie, Ozzie Davis as the, the man in the wheelchair who says, They dyed me black. I'm JFK. They took a little portion of my brain out and put a sandbag in there. There's like sand in there. I don't know. But um, he, he does a really good job with that role as well. So Bruce and Ozzy do a wonderful job. Also, there's a small, small role for Reggie Bannister in this, which I greatly appreciate because I love Reggie Bannister from all the Phantasm films. I'm a huge Phantasm fan, P-H-A-N. So that leads me to the other force with this film that I'm all about is Don Coscarelli. I really love Don Coscarelli, mainly because of the Phantasm films that he's given us. Uh, I, I also like he's, he's a fiercely independent filmmaker. From what I know, I've heard an interview with him, and he tries to do all his stuff independently. He tries to not have too much interference from actual production companies that aren't his own. So a lot of the times what he's putting together is severely low budget, and it kind of seems that way a lot of times, but he does try and go as big as he can on practical effects, which is another thing I appreciate. But his stories, uh, or what he chooses to use as his story for inspiration for a film, are always kind of weird, and I and I like the weird. Obviously, Phantasm, super weird concept. Uh, Bubba Hotep is also a very weird concept, uh, but I like it. I like the weird, original, interesting ideas in horror. Um this is actually based, Bubba Hotep's based on a short story by Joe R. Lansdale, who is a very established horror writer. I actually haven't read any of his stuff, but I've seen some films and short films that are based on stories of his, so I, I will get to reading some of his stuff. Uh, one that I really want to check out, because I heard an interview with him and he was talking about it in depth, The Drive-In, I think, I wrote it down. Yeah, it's just called The Drive-In. Apparently the concept is like, some like meteor hits hits the earth and and people at this drive-in are then like stuck at this drive-in movie theater and then they start like mutating and there's all sorts of wacky things that happen and then they have to create their own society because they're trapped there and it gets really weird it sounds fun it sounds nutty and sounds like it's up my alley so i want to check that out i have a lot of respect for joe r lansdale because i know what he's done i just haven't read any of it yet uh, okay, so this movie just about broke even when it was released. Uh, they came out $200,000 ahead. So that's not a whole lot, especially when you're putting a lot of time and work into a film like this. So they probably wish they would have made a lot more money than that. But hey, it didn't lose money, so that's a good thing. Uh, it pretty much hit cult, st cult status out of the gate. Uh, it got pretty, pretty good reviews, to be honest, and a lot of people liked it immediately. They had been putting it on a bunch of festival circuits and between hitting the festival circuit and doing that as much as they could and Bruce Campbell being in it because he has that star power with people in the horror community, uh, people were drawn to it pretty quick as soon as it hit DVD. So it was kind of an immediate cult status film, which I'm glad. Uh, a sequel was going to happen. It had a script, but it didn't get enough interest from investors. That is a story that you end up hearing a lot in Hollywood, especially with horror films. Although, you know, I say that, but maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not especially with horror films. I just am more keyed into horror films because that's my thing. So, excuse me. So maybe it's prevalent with everything. 
every genre. I don't know. But doing my research, I didn't know about this. We didn't get a sequel, but apparently, I need to look into this, IDW Publishing, which does comic books, did a five-issue prequel to this film called Bubba Hotep and the Cosmic Bloodsuckers, and Joe R. Lansdale supervised that project, so I'm going to need to find that because that sounds awesome. Okay, so let's get into the actual film portion of it. This is shot very well. I love the way it's shot. It has quick shots where it needs to have quick shots. And that's another thing. It's edited very well, too. The pacing is decent. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're familiar with, with what Don Coscarelli's done in the past, the way he directs, the way his cinematography is, um, it's very good. He, d he does it well. He, he chooses shots well. It looks aesthetically pleasing. It's good. Uh, so this actually immediately puts directly in your face the depression of being in an assisted living home, which actually speaks to a much larger theme, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more later. Um, and it kind of gets, you know, it lets you know immediately that, like, this is a fun movie because the main character, as you first meet him, is Bruce Campbell saying that he's actual Elvis. Everyone says, oh, you're Sebastian Half, sir. You're misremembering. You have dementia or something. And he's like, no, no, no. I am actual Elvis. I switched places with Sebastian Half. He liked drugs even more than I did, had a heart attack, and died. And now I'm stuck as Sebastian Half, even though I am actual Elvis. I'm the king. So you meet this character immediately, and you're just like, oh, this is going to be like quirky, comedy, fun. But... They do a really good job of also giving you the message that this is also about something else. It's about aging, and it's about what happens to you when you age. And I'm going to talk to talk to that a little bit more. So for that reason, it is fun and funny, but it's also very serious and has a lot of heart to it. And there is impact if you're really paying attention to the film. Uh, so one of the cool things they did with this is they did a really good job of portraying that uh, Bruce Campbell's character, S Sebastian Half or Elvis, as you want to, however you want to put it, because it's never really fleshed out. Like, you could see it being either way. You could be like, he's got dementia and he just thinks he's Elvis, or you could see it as he actually was Elvis. So choose to believe it how you want. They leave it very ambiguous, and I kind of like that about the film. So the days just blur together for him, and they did a really good job of, of visually portraying that. He's getting, like, flashes of things happening. He's not even sure that he's seeing certain things, and it's all just blurring together. So I can imagine that that's kind of how it is being in an assisted living home, especially when you're not doing a whole lot, which they portray with his character. He's laying in bed a lot, and that's kind of how it seems to be with a lot of assisted living homes is that they're just kind of hanging out. You know, they're just there, which sucks. So, um... Yeah, I feel like that's probably an accurate portrayal. Uh, so then there's a moment where the daughter of his roommate who passes away comes in and she starts just throwing all these things out, including pictures of her father, his purple heart. She throws out his purple heart and um, Sebastian Half or Elvis. Bruce, I'll just say Bruce Campbell's character. Bruce Campbell's character is like, can I at least have his purple heart? He was very proud of that thing. So this kind of speaks to one of those themes of like what happens as you age, uh, our society in general, at least in the United States, is very geared towards young people. It's all about people who can be in the workforce and contribute in that way. Uh, it's all about the young. It's all about marketing to young people. And when you age to a certain level, you're just kind of viewed as persona non grata in a sense. And that plays out in this film a few ways. One way is with this daughter coming in and just throwing out all her father's stuff. I mean, he just died, and she's just basically like, all right, it's over, dead and gone. And it kind of raises this question of when you get older, the appreciation for you drops significantly because you're not young anymore. Because everyone else who is young is so focused on their own lives and other people around their age, and you're just kind of looked at as you had your life, you're done, now go sit in this assisted living home or lay down in this assisted living home and wait for death. Uh, and on top of that, it's kind of this, um, what do you do? And, and did your life even matter? Like, when you're gone, are your memories there? Did what you do, what you did during your life, did it matter? Did it have an impact? Will people remember you? And with this, this woman coming in and throwing all her father's stuff away, it's showing that she's just kind of like, all right, that's the end. That's the end of his life. 
uh, moving on and the memory does not live on really and that's pretty sad to be honest um the other thing is sexuality kind of going away which which plays a lot with um bruce campbell's character because he keeps talking about how you know back in his day he would he would get erections all the time and had, and have no problem but now that he's older he has a problem with it and it's very depressing and then talking about how he could get women if he wanted to but now all these women look at him and they just see him as nothing basically and that's kind of what happens you know unless unless it, you're with other older individuals and you know there can still be a sex life in at old age which i'm sure some people heard that and were like ooh gross but hey you know it's it's healthy if people want to do it all good but um there is this this overall idea that you age out of sexuality too and you're no longer looked at that way which has to be particularly tough for males because you know being a male i know that that sex is a big thing in your life and especially when you're like young that's one of your big driving factors i mean it's it's an animalistic tendency it's natural it's not ridiculous it, it's an actual nature driven thing to procreate to be driven to procreate although we're at a societal point where we don't have to procreate so we'll actually have sex for fun um but that urge is still there it's still driven by nature and so I can't imagine as a male getting to that point where that's not a thing anymore. Like you can't even engage in that and people don't look at you that way any well, I mean your loved one loved ones, females relationships wouldn't look at you that way anymore, really. So that's kind of hard to wrap your mind around. And I think they do a good job portraying that with Bruce Campbell's character in this film. And this is what I'm saying. There are like many, many facets to the idea of aging. And obviously, a lot of this uh, credit goes to Joe R. Lansdale, who wrote the short story, I would assume. Um, keeps it, oh yeah, I already talked about it, you know, keeps it relatively ambiguous, which I like, whether he's actually Elvis or not. Bruce Campbell as Elvis is everything in this movie I wrote down. It is so fun to just watch him chew the scenery. It, it looks like, I mean, he could fool me if it's not the case, but it looks like he's having a really good time playing Elvis in this role. Um, every time he's on the screen, it's just fun. The way he plays it, there's so much joy in it. I love it. Like I said, he's everything in this film. One of the main th reasons to watch it. There's a good casual comedy to this that's throughout the entire thing. Uh, and the, act the delivery from the actors actually helps a lot too. So there was a good job writing kind of casual comedy. It's not like over the top. It's not too understated. It's kind of like this nice kind of medium level and the performances of Ozzy Davis and Bruce Campbell in particular really help sell those lines, and I love it. And their interplay between the two of them, it's very believable what's going on between those two, and, I, and it's a lot of fun. So the scarab beetles in this that show up initially, a lot of people probably don't, people are just like beetles. It's supposed to be scarab beetles since they're tied into the whole ancient Egypt um, mummy thing. So the Scarab Beetles look appropriately hokey, I would say. Like, they look like that perfect mix of hokey and realistic. Uh, and it makes sense because this is a film that has a lot of comedy to it, so that fits. In some other films, like, say they look like that for, you know, the, the Brendan Fraser, The Mummy. Wouldn't work so well because it's too much on the comedic end. They were going for more serious, although there is a little bit of comedy. But for this, perfect. Love, love the way it looks. And practical effects, once again, love that, as I've said so many times. Um, the scene of Bruce Campbell and Ozzie Davis's characters going to battle at the very end is wonderful in this film. Uh, that I, it's, it's like, it always sticks out in my mind. That is the one scene I remember most from this film when I think back to it. It's them coming down the hallway in the assisted living home. Uh, Ozzie Davis's character in his motorized wheelchair and right next to him, uh, Bruce Campbell's character with a walker, which my wife was watching this with me, and she's an occupational therapist, so she knows about uh, walking assisted walking devices, and she was just like, "He's not, he's not using that walker correctly." And I turned to her and I was like, "Rebecca, I, I don't think they really cared about that when they were making this film." She's like, "Well, I'm just saying, if they wanted to make this realistic, that's not," and I'm like. I don't think they really care. And I think your your typical viewer doesn't either. And they probably don't even pick up on it. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Because that's not what that scene is about. That scene is about these old people who everyone thinks 
are useless to society at this point, pretty much forgotten and left there for dead. And it's their badass moment. They have a new lease on life. And Bruce Campbell's character talks about this in the film. When the mummy shows up at the assisted living home and he has something to get involved in, something to investigate, something to fight against, it makes him feel invigorated again. And he's just like, he has something to live for. It's not all about just laying there and waiting for death anymore. It's about getting involved, having some action. And just seeing that moment of them being motivated and they're like, yeah, we're at the end of our lives, but we're still going to make a difference and we're going to save the souls of all these other, other individuals at this assisted living home. It's just a badass moment for these older gentlemen who people look at it and are just like, whatever, their life is over. Not so much, because they're going to be heroes. And I, I just love that moment. The music is great in all such situations in this, in my opinion, especially at the end when you have the very impactful moments of both the characters dying, basically. Uh, passing away, um, the heartfelt music that plays is very well done, and it really helps those scenes. Uh, and it's impactful. It really is, because you know they went out on top, in a sense, the, these guys. Uh, the whole movie is basically a meditation on aging and if life even matters once you've passed away. I kind of talked about this a little bit, but it's this kind of, it makes you think, if you're really watching the film and paying attention, you know, when I age, how are people going to view me? When I die, are people going to remember me? It kind of plays to those fears. And I feel like a lot of people have those fears in life is what happens as I age to my body, to, you know, my mind, to how people think of me, how people view me. Um, my interaction with society, my ability to do things on a daily basis. But then also when I'm away, when I die, will people remember me? Will I leave a legacy? And I feel like that's why a lot of people have children for that reason. But that doesn't guarantee it, as you see in this film with that daughter throwing all her, her uh, father's things out because she's just, you know, she didn't care. So this plays to a lot of fears about aging and dying. And these are fears that should resonate with everyone because it will happen to everyone. And for this reason, it's not just a good movie because it's fun and there's good comedy to it. It's a good movie because it has an actual message. It really has something to say, and it should resonate with pretty much everyone. I mean, it certainly resonates with me, as you can tell. Um, and the last thing I just said, uh, the last thing I want to say about it is a more simplistic version of what I was saying is this film has a lot of heart because it has a lot to say. And I really like it. I love this film. It's it's a really good time. And I feel like every time I do watch it, which it's been a while since the last time, every time I do watch it, I'm reminded how good it is. Like, I always remember liking it, and then I watch it, and I like it more than I remember liking it. So, it's the gift that keeps on giving every time you watch it. So, thank you, Bruce Campbell. Thank you, Ozzie Davis. Thank you, Don Coscarelli. Thank you, Joe R. Lansdale. And thank you to everyone who came together to make the film possible because it is an awesome cult classic. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this review. Now I'm going to do my star rating on this one. Um, five stars out of five stars with half stars in play. Four stars. I'm going to give us a four star. I think it's firmly there. It makes a lot of sense. This is a four star film. It's a good one. Thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Uh, if you haven't seen this film, I would have hoped you didn't go all the way through this because it spoiled a bunch of stuff, but go watch the movie anyway. It's totally worth it. Hit that subscribe if you can for me. That's your one way to pay me back. Costs you no money, like a second of your life, and it can mean a lot for my channel. So thank you for checking this out, though. Spread the word if you can. Until next time, keep it brutal.